Hello, my wonderful animal friends. Denise Fleck here, the Pet Safety Crusader. And today we're going to take pages 68 and 69 out of the Pet Safety Bible to discuss the importance of spaying and neutering your pet. And I'm gonna basically chit chat about dogs and cats today, but this applies to bunnies too and some other species. We all know bunnies can reproduce very quickly. Sometimes spay neuter, we kind of combine with bunnies and call it sputer. Um, you need a, a, a exotic specific veterinarian to do a good spay neuter on a rabbit. Um, oftentimes um, people will take their rabbit in to be neutered and they find out it needs to be spayed or they take the rabbit in to be spayed and they find out it needs to be neutered because sometimes it's hard to really tell which gender we have, especially when those buns are young. But what I'd like to talk about today specifically, um, yesterday was actually Spay Day USA, but spaying and neutering is something we need to think about 365 days a year because it's important because it can cut down on animal homelessness. I hope you'll go to the blog I have listed here, but just to throw some numbers at you, um, six and a half million dogs and cats enter shelters every year, and it's a pretty even split, a little bit more dogs than cats, um, about 3.3 3 million dogs and about 3.2 million cats. And the good thing is there's actually been a decline. Um, we've been checking numbers for quite some time now, but the latest numbers are showing a significant decline since 2011, which was, if I do the math, <laughs> eight years ago. So that's a good thing. Hopefully we're getting education out there about spay and neuter. Hope, hopefully more animals are being adopted. Hopefully more animals are being returned to their home when they somehow escape. So, you know, this can be a good thing. Yet, still 1.5 million dogs and cats in the United States are being euthanized in shelters each year because there just aren't enough homes. That equates to about 670,000 dogs and around 860,000 cats. So more cats, um, even though there's kind of an even split with maybe a little bit more dogs coming into shelters, um, more cats are actually being euthanized, unfortunately. And we don't want to see those numbers high on either end of the spectrum. Hi, Barbara. Nice to have you joining in today. And you guys, please always comment. I never know you're here unless you say hey. So I'm always happy to have you um, chime in, say hello, tell me what's going on with your life, send me a picture of somebody you're giving a butt, belly rub or an ear scratch to, or ask a question. Well, as far as spay and neuter goes, that's one of the most important things we can do to cut down on animal homelessness. And if you read the blog, you'll see a lot of what I have to say about that. Um, it's, just, it's just a fact. More animals exist than there are homes to take care of them, forever homes to take care of them, to love and you know have them be part of the family. For every human born, 15 puppies and 45 kittens are born. Now, I know those of you that are my loyal viewers here um, love to surround yourself with animals, but most of us cannot have 15 puppies and 45 kittens. And that's how many, you know, are born to each person, you know, each day. So we're never going to get caught up. Um, they just reproduce much more quickly than we do. Kitty cats can go into heat. Um, they can have their heat cycles every three weeks during what we call kitten season, which is typically March to September. If you live in a warmer climate, it might extend to November. And the gestation period for dogs and cats is about 63 days. You know, for us humans, it's nine months. So that means, you know, a kitty cat can go into heat, get impregnated, and two months later she pops out a litter of kittens and then, you know, can actually get pregnant again right away. Dogs typically have two cycles per year, so they don't crank out quite as many, um, you know, puppies as there are kittens. So that's why it's 15 puppies to 45 kittens. But still, it's more puppies than, you know, we have places to... Um, give them home. Sorry, I've got pop-ups here. I'm trying to get rid of so I can see you guys' um, comments. 
Yeah, and you know, it is important to spay and neuter. Now, I will say that, you know, I, I want you to check into your local laws and find out what you have to do. Talk to your pet, make sure your dog or cat is old enough, big enough, healthy enough to go through the surgery. Typically in shelters, you know, they will do it younger because they want to make sure when the pet's adopted out that surgery has already taken place because gosh darn it, us humans cannot be trusted. And even though we say, oh, we'll get them fixed, um, it often doesn't happen. So the responsibility does um, lie to the shelters to make sure that happens or the rescues before we actually get to take them into our hearts and our homes. So sometimes they may be, you know, spayed or neutered younger than we may want them to. And also in certain municipalities, there are laws that they have to be done by a certain age. Typically with cats, I believe puppies too, but they want them to be at least two pounds in order to withstand the surgery, to be big enough so that the veterinarians can get in there and really see what's going on um, and, you know, to be able to handle the anesthesia. So about two pounds, which for a kitten equates to about two months because for the first four to six months of life, they're about a pound per month. Now the problem when we don't spay neuter, but you know what, let me back up real quickly because you know I'm assuming everybody knows everything and you may not. Spay and neuter basically is a surgical procedure. It can be done in most cases with a very small incision these days and it removes the reproductive organs on the male or the female to prevent them from having a litter or creating a litter, creating life um, at any point in the future. If some of you are more savvy and do a lot of um, research into these kind of things, you may find out that there is, um, I believe it's the Found Animals has actually had a grant situation or a ward out there for years and other companies may be too, to find a non-surgical way. Um, there is some, you know, injected sterilization happening. I'm not sure that it's approved across the board. Um, you may find in those cases that a dog that has been sterilized, and I think it's typically just the males, um, will have a green tattoo on the abdomen or the inner thigh to notate that since there may not be a scar and he may still have testicles. Um, but, uh, it, you know, it's just, it's such an important thing. And yes, I'm seeing some comments here. Dog license is absolutely cheaper. Again, you know, may vary from place to place, but in some cities it may be $10 to license your pet every year, but if they haven't been spayed or neutered, that may be $100 or higher. So, you know, that's certainly a good incentive for us. And what spay neuter does do is it decreases aggressiveness in some animals because it, it tones down those hormones. They're no longer raging. Yet, it doesn't really change the animal's personality. It, he, he can still be a protective dog, you know, protecting the family, but he won't be as aggressive. Particularly in kitty cats, it may decrease the risks of them spraying or marking their territory because that is something they often do, especially, you know, the, the males that are wanting to plot out, this is my, my domain, any females that come here are mine, so to speak. So it can lower, you know, the, the incidence of spray, um, spraying and marking. Hey, Darlene, so nice to have you joining in. Um, it can lower the risks of certain diseases prostate issues for males, memory cancer for females, and men, men, male dogs and cats can get memory cancer as well. But one of the biggest things, and you know, if anybody wants to see it, I have some pictures, I'll send them to you. I'm not gonna put gory stuff online here, but um, one of the problems with females, especially if they've had a few litters, is they are at risk of a disease called pyometra. Pyometra is basically an infection of the uterus and it kind of fills with pus and it implodes on itself and becomes a real emergency situation. Um, it can be life-threatening to the dog. So spaying and neutering can be very important from a health standpoint as well, but of course, talk to your vet. Find a veterinarian you trust implicitly. I always like to recommend that you find a veterinarian that is AHA approved, meaning American Animal Hospital Association. And to that, I really like to add on that I like your pet 
healthcare professionals to be fear-free certified. If you haven't ever checked out any of Dr. Marty Becker's um, links, go look into fearfreehomes.com and notice what these are courses, you know, individual pet parents, pet sitters, trainers can take, but it's also something veterinarians take to make that veterinary experience more enjoyable, or I should say at least tolerable for dogs and cats, because so many pets aren't getting the care they need, because us humans sometimes think it's more traumatic for them to go to the vet than to not go, and then things go unchecked, unnoticed, and problems happen. So, like I said, it's, you know, um, the, the surgery is really very low risk. Most animals go home that day or the next. Obviously, you have to watch that they're not pulling at stitches, but it's just so important and there are, are very few risks for them, but more benefits. But again, like I said, talk with your, your animal control, talk with your veterinarian, find out when you have to do it. Because personally, I do think we are doing it a little bit too early um, in some cases and some of the pets aren't getting some of the hormones they need to grow and thrive. But it is an important thing to cut down on this animal homelessness. There is no reason for a, a female to go through one litter to settle down. That, that isn't, that, that's a fallacy. And don't think your pet will get fat because you spay or neuter them. If they get fat, it's probably because you felt sorry for them and gave them too many treats um, didn't take them on the walks or just, you know, use that as a source of love. And I know we are all guilty. Haiku looks at me with those brown eyes. He licks his lips <laughs> and he wants something to eat. So, you know, make sure you're giving low calorie, healthy treats, um, you know, and not letting them pack on the pounds. But spay neuter itself should not cause pets to pack on weight. Also, kids, if you have kids in the family, they don't need to see the miracle of birth under your front porch. Um, there are so many videos out there these days um, that people can watch without putting our pets through this. Actually, many animals die giving childbirth, especially those that have been pregnated um, before they themselves are six months of age because that can happen. Um, also, sometimes dogs um, that have wider heads, pugs and bulldogs, if they aren't taken to the veterinarian for delivery, um, moms often die and babies do as well because the heads are too wide to come down the birth canal properly and those dogs need cesareans. So I'm not saying it's always the case. But it's so important if you then do have a pet who is pregnant, that just like with a human, you get them in for their prenatal checkups and talk to the vet and see how things are going. Um, very often, we don't have to play midwife. And now I'm kind of going off on another tangent, which I am so apt to do. But um, it's important to make sure everything up until that point is healthy and going along fine um, and should the vet suspect that you need to have the delivery done under veterinary care you're prepared for that and also you know me I'm going to tell you, you know what to do first aid wise um, should anything not go right during that time but back to the spay neuter and the animal homelessness by spaying and neutering our pets that is one way we can help cut down on this situation where there are 15 puppies and 45 kittens born for every person the other part of the animal homelessness equation, though, is also to train and to nurture, to make sure every pet you adopt is an adoption for the lifetime of that pet by making him a welcome family member. Make sure you teach him his manners. Adults and kids alike in human form need to learn certain manners um, to get along in society and just to get along in the family. We all have to have parameters, um, you know, a certain little, I don't want to put us in a box, but we need to have some guidelines so that we know how to function with each other and don't constantly butt heads. Same thing with your dog. If your dog jumps up every time grandma comes in the door and knocks her over, you, you know, the dog's going to get relegated to the back room every time you have company. And we don't want that. We want them to be part of the family. If the dog hasn't been housebroken or the kitty doesn't go in her litter box, that's going to make for an unpleasant situation as well. So it's so important we do teach manners, that we nurture, that we give our pets the quality of our time because when they're with us, they are totally in the moment and we want to be in the moment with them. And we also want to do our research. And you know, I've got all of this in the beginning of the Pet Safety Bible as well. So read up. But, you know, don't just 
you know, take a, an animal into your life without having thought it through. Um, I know some of us are impulsive and you see an animal and you want to help. And I totally get that. But you've got to make sure it's a match for your lifestyle. Unless you're one of these, you know, um, <laughs> hardcore rescuers that will take in anything and will definitely keep them for their lifetime and give them the best life possible. But, you know, most people adopting really, again, need some um, guidance as to the proper path. If you're heading off to college, getting a puppy or a kitten probably isn't the best choice because even if you are allowed to bring one of those to your dorm room, you know, a dog or a cat's going to live 10, 12, 15, maybe even 20 years. And in the next 20 years, if you're heading off to college, your life is going to change significantly. So, you know, at that time in your life, maybe something like not even a rabbit, which lives 10 to 12 years, but maybe, you know, guinea pigs or hamsters, which one to three years might make more sense in a dorm room, as long as you'll be responsible and take care of their needs and give them quality time too. Um, you know, I, none of us know what's in store for us with life, but when you have a human child or when you have a fur child, you've adopted them and taken them into your heart and your home for their lifetime. So no matter what happens to you or your lifestyle, you have to make sure you account for them. They depend on us so much for food, for love, for grooming, for veterinary care, and our lives just would not be the same without them. So please, you know, help there not be so many strays on the street that are getting hit by cars, that are getting in fights with other animals, that are eating poison, um, and, and having, you know, all kinds of unpleasant ends. Adopt for life and be responsible unless you're a professional responsible breeder who is perpetuating that species, you know, responsibly. Um, you know, do spay and neuter the pet. And just remember, as Mahatma Gandhi once said, and I know I'm paraphrasing, but the greatness of a nation and its people is judged by the way it treats its animals. Love you all for loving the animals. Thanks for tuning in today um, for another page out of the Pet Safety Bible. Bye-bye for now.